Hey guys, this is Nicole Van Tassel here with I Explore Science, and I just wanted to pop on because this is a question that um, a lot of teachers who are new to this approach, the NGSS, exploration, discovery, three-dimensional teaching, ask. They ask, what are storylines? And so, you know, what are storylines? Okay, so storylines are a coherent sequence of lessons. And you're probably like, I'm already teaching storylines. My lessons are coherent. They're all on this topic. But the difference between storylines and just your normal lesson sequence are, it's probably twofold. Um, the first is that it's built on a phenomena. And if you're not sure what a phenomena is, I have some resources for you. Just drop a note and I will send those your, your way. But right now we're talking about storylines. Um, so storylines are built on a phenomena and they are driven forward by student questions. Now, a typical sequence of lessons, we have a topic, we teach our, we teach this topic, and then we move to the next topic, and we move to the next topic. And we understand the connections between all of those. And it is typically a very linear approach, like this idea, then that idea, then that idea, like you'd find in a textbook or an encyclopedia. But the reality is learning doesn't always happen that way. In the, I don't know, natural world or whatever, when we're learning something new, we aren't like, oh, I need to redesign my website. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to learn every single little itty, itty bitty thing about it. And then I'm going to go do my website. And that's typically how we teach. A storyline flips that on its head. It looks at how we really learn. Like, oh, I need to solve this problem. So I'm going to figure out how to do this. Oh, and I'm realizing I need to know this thing in order to do that thing. So now I'm going to go figure that out. Oh, and now I have another question. So I need to figure out this problem so I can do this and then I can get back to that. And that's how storylines work. It's this question and then a question that blooms from that exploration and that guides us to the next question um, and the next exploration, the next activity. So it doesn't always look like this kind of normal sequence that you might find in a textbook, but in by the end, students have covered all of that same, and I don't I hate to use the word covered, but they have been exposed to and they've explored and they've discovered all of those same ideas and concepts as they relate to the initial phenomenon. Now, why do we use storylines? First of all, storylines, they are, it's not just free inquiry. They are very much guided and crafted by the teacher because we all have objectives we need to get to at the end, right? That's how our public education system or even our private education system works. We have these objectives. We need to get our students there. It's not just free inquiry, explore it, anything you want. But students are really, teachers take this like behind the scenes role and students are put forward. So on the surface, it really looks like students are the true like owners of the, and they are the true owners of their learning. They are truly driving the storyline forward. The teachers crafted a lot of that, that flow in terms of choosing the phenomena and developing those explorations so that students get the ideas that, you know, you, you're, you're aiming for, or you're targeting. But the students are really the, the ones that are taking it like this next step and that next step. And the teachers are just guiding it by embracing the questions that students have come up with or, or nudging students towards certain questions or certain areas, helping them figure out what do we need to know to get back to explaining our big phenomenon. Now, in a typical like storyline, we would say you're planning your unit ahead. It has this big anchor. It's tying together all the different unit ideas. It is um, addressing usually more than one performance expectation. That's where like the bundling of the NGSS comes in. But the reality is like, I mean, and that's the ideal, right? These big things that students can investigate and take weeks and weeks to figure out a big unit. But I know right now that is not the easiest thing to do. For most teachers, whether you're hybrid or face-to-face -face or whatever, this year it is just all about adaptation. It's about just staying maybe a day or two ahead. And so that's why I created this simple storylines formula that takes like what a storyline is at its core and condenses it down so that you can create these like simple storylines or small storylines to put to bring in the benefits of phenomenon focused and student driven learning but do it in a really manageable, like bite-sized way so that we can get through this year and still provide our students with the best possible science um, that we are capable of right now. It might not be the best ever, and that's okay because we're all just doing our best like right now in the moment. moment. Um, but it, it's the best that we can do right now, and it's still a really high-quality education. So storylines are wonderful because they 
shift the ownerships to the students. They really cultivate that intrinsic motivation. They really transform your class from this teacher directed, I'm going to tell you what to learn. I'm gonna tell you what to wonder about. I'm gonna tell you what to figure out to the student taking that role and taking that ownership and, and really gaining their confidence as independent learners and intrinsically motivated, curious learners. It's, it's wonderful to see this transformation. And I know it's possible because the members of our iExplore Academy are doing this, um, again, to the degree that they are capable of right now, and that's totally okay whatever level that they are at and whatever level you are at. But I know it is possible even right now, even if you're virtual, even if you're hybrid. So. I want to maybe a little bit tough love, like don't use that as an excuse because incorporating these pieces is possible. And I would love to help you if you're like, I want to do this, but I don't know how or I need help. Um, I wanted to invite you to a workshop I am hosting um, in December. It's a two part workshop. It's December 5th and December 12th. And it uh, is about the simple storylines formula. So putting together these very simple storylines that might last two weeks. You sit down, you plan your storyline, and it lasts for, you know, five classes. Um, and it integrates all of those, like, really big benefits of storylines without the whole overwhelm of I need to put everything together and plan for, like, three months ahead. Uh, not really three months, but plan for, you know, a month or two ahead, like the unit ahead, when right now you're just, I'm, I'm drowning, I need to stay afloat. So if you would like information about the Simple Storylines workshop that's happening in December, please let me know. I have a discount code for, um, to use before November 30th, but you have to be on my email list to do that. So I can send you, sorry, I got distracted. Um, I can send you the link to register for my email list. The code will be going out on Wednesday. Wait, today's Wednesday. The code will be going out this Wednesday and next Thursday. Um, I already sent my email out this morning. Whoops. Uh, the code will be going out again. Maybe it'll come out on Friday. I can't remember. The code's coming out in the email list sometime in the next week. Um, and you can use that code to save or you can just register if you don't want emails from me. You can just register at the Simple Storylines um, website. So reach out. Um, if you have questions, I really would love to work with you in December. There is... It's, I'm capping it at 10 seats, and I can't remember how many are already filled. So make sure that if this is something that you want to do, you get on, in on it now. All right, thanks so much. And I hope this explanation of storylines kind of gets you, get you thinking and get those juices flowing about how you can really make your classroom a little bit more student-centered, student-driven, and um, rooted in phenomena, and, and really just you know help you crack create a culture where students are the owners of their learning and they are intrinsically motivated to learn. They want to be there and they want to learn and they want to puzzle it out. All right, reach out if you have questions and I will catch you later.